Hi, everybody. Welcome to uh, Mondays with Maples, where we have some conversations with faculty, students, and staff at Oregon Institute of Technology. My guest today, Dr. Bert Clark from uh, Natural Sciences, and a student, Kaylin English, who's here with uh, Professor Clark. So let me start with uh, you, Professor Clark. Um, you're in uh, natural sciences, mm -hmm. uh, but we have a, a new name of a degree coming online in biology and health sciences. Correct. And, That's good. Um, so why, why the name change? What does that mean? Right. Well, the key thing is for biology, it's a very broad area. And in the people that are in the biology health sciences, they want to go into professional schools. Maybe they're looking at medical school, they're looking at dental school, pharmacy, that type of thing. And, and the courses that we have are very specific to help those people get to, to that area. Okay. And, and so, I, I mean, the, the, we also have a biology program, and that's focused more on the field biology and the more traditional oh. biology courses. Mm -hmm. uh, but the health, health biology, or the, you know, the biology health sciences, uh, that came about probably about 2009, where uh, the Association of American Medical Colleges came together and said, what do you need to prepare for, for medical school? And, and truly, for medical, uh, to prepare for med school, it's very similar what you need to prepare for dental school, or it's right. very similar to prepare for pharmacy. You need this intense foundation, and I, I think people know it. These are schools that are, they're hard, hard careers to get into, hard professions to get into. And so there's lots of chemistry, a full year of organic chemistry, full year of, of inorganic chemistry, full year of biochemistry. And so it's very specific in, in that area. And so well, and you have a background that you would understand what it takes to get into those areas, too. I, I have, yeah. Uh, so, oh, before coming here, um, I was, yeah, I did a lot of research in, yeah. in, in the health area. And I was in the Boston area for, like, hair is gray, but I'm not that old. <laughs> but, but, but I was in the Boston area, and there I, I, I did a lot of research. I was a president of a biotechnology company. I was at Harvard University Medical School. I had joint appointments at Tufts Medical School and, and also the Shriners Burn Institute in Boston. And so, so I, yeah, there was a lot of, um, it was a lot of fun there. And, and uh, 17, 18 years of doing research there. So you so know what it takes really to prepare students to be successful in those kinds of settings. Very much so, yeah. And at Tufts Medical School, I mean, many of the people in our lab were, were you know, we had both medical students that were already in school and, and they were doing research as well. But we also had quite a few undergraduate students that were applying to medical school. And, uh, and so, and, and yeah, you would talk shop all the day, you know, every day. All the people around you were, were in medical school or had already finished up school. Sure, so. sure. Kaylin, tell us about yourself. Where are you from? What year are you in right now? And I'm originally from L.A., just north of L.A., uh, Santa Clarita. Uh, I was born in Burbank, California. And I came up here to Klamath Falls, OIT, because my mom got a job opportunity up here. Cool. And so um, it wasn't my first choice in school, but I'm, I'm really liking it. So, yeah. Good. What year are you now? Oh, I'm, uh, I'm a senior, so okay. I'll be graduating in June. Yay. Yeah, <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> it's, been, it's been about right, I think. Okay. It's time to move on. Uh, have we challenged you a little? Yes. Okay. Well, definitely. that's good. Yeah. That, from my perspective, that's good. I yes. have to tell you. For mine, um, <laughs> not so good. But I'm hopefully, or I'm hoping it'll pay off. Okay. Okay. And what are your plans after graduating at this point? I'm hoping to get into med school this year. Okay. I applied um, for both MD and DO, and so I'm just waiting to hear back and see what happens. Okay. Okay. And you, you volunteer a lot of time around the community as well. Tell, tell us a little bit about that. So um, one of my first volunteering opportunities was at High Desert Hospice. Mm -hmm. I started in January of 2009 and there I just go in and pretty much do whatever they need me to do. Either sit with the patient, um, I can even help them, you know, go to the bathroom. I'm just there to help them, you know, with everything, cooking food and just giving the families just a little break from you know, 24 hour care. Right. And I also am there to, you know, comfort the patients and just make their last little reminder of time here on earth, just, you know, happier, less stress. Sure. So, and then I, um, I volunteer for, oh man, I, I try to do a little bit of everything. I'm also the, um, you know, the, the president of the health sciences right. club. 
And so I try to get my members involved in a lot of other community activities too. And I feel like I can kind of um, say I volunteer whatever and whatever else they do because I try to set up everything with them. So Kaylin, how many uh, students are actually in the uh, Health Sciences Club? About 30 to 40, mm -hmm. would you say? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, not everyone always comes every single time, but there's usually a couple new people um, at the meeting. So around total, 30 to 40. Okay. okay. Yeah. That sounds really good. So tell me about your classes now, this term. Okay, so currently I am in biochem, intro to neurosciences, psychoactive drugs, and senior seminar. Okay. And they're going pretty well. I think. Okay. I'm learning a lot. What, what is senior seminar? Senior seminar is, um, I'd say probably the most dreaded class or one of them <laughs> um, in senior year for the health sciences major. It's where you have to give a 50 minute presentation and you have to write a seven to 10 page paper as well. Okay. And what's your topic? Integrative medicine. Cool. And it, what is that? What are you talking about? Integrative medicine. So basically, it is just the incorporation of Western, just conventional medicine with alternative medicine, which are, you know, it includes treatment plans such as acupuncture, um, spinal manipulations, instead of drugs. And, you know, drugs would be more of a last resort than the first resort. Okay. And so it's more of a, I'd say it, it fits my, my lifestyle a little better. I would prefer to you know, refrain from taking an antibiotic because of integrative medicine is, in other words, preventative medicine. Okay. So you go there to prevent an illness rather than being treated for one. Is it very much a lifestyle kind of living or is par in part of? I would say so. A lot of the treatments that they suggest are yoga, um, tai chi, things like that, exercise, which is usually the part of any treatment plan that a physician will, you know, prescribe, but okay. it's being able to incorporate that into your life all the time. And by doing that, you will be able to prevent illnesses instead of, you know, waiting for them to, to come on. But yeah, it's, you can actually specialize in integrative medicine. Very cool. Very yeah. cool. And what are you teaching this term? This term is microbiology okay. and it's microbiology. There's a, quite a few different courses I teach, but but uh, this term is microbiology, and, and not only I teach to the biology health sciences students, but also, uh, in this case, there's dental hygiene students and nursing students and respiratory care. So there's a lot of different programs. And sure. And that is uh, you know, the, the major number of students. But also there's some students in there in civil engineering that, that they'll use microbiology later on maybe to clean up an oil spill or bioremediation. Mm -hmm. and, and so it's always fun. So it's quite a diverse group. but. Uh, it's a fun class. It's intense. That sounds and really so cool. Oh yeah, and so um, we have a lab every week, and and so they do lots of experiments. This week they're looking at well bacteria from them, <laughs> and so oh. so so <laughs> no, actually there's a, a new exper a new lab we just did. We just finished up. Oh boy, um, it's it's bacteria of the belly button, and <laughs> and, and and so so they find <laughs> little quiet places and they swab their belly button. But there's recently a, a publication where. Um, brand new bacteria have been isolated from the belly button, and so and normally people uh, that have bacteria, your bacteria are similar to your family and and okay. within the belly button. But they discovered out of 1,400 bacteria, uh, different types of bacteria from the belly button, 662 were never known to humans before. Wow! So this is like a brand nobody ever looked there before. <laughs> <laughs> wow! And so so it's fun because it, it gives students the uh, ability to say, wow, I can discover something new. Maybe name it name it after myself, but also just the whole idea that, um, you know, we have microorganisms and they're part of us and, and most of them are harmless, but some of them are, are disease causing. That is very cool. So, so they have a good time. <laughs> that, that speaks a lot to the sort of the linking of research and teaching. Um, and I know that you feel very strongly about that link. Oh, big time. I, I mean, I, I've done research in the past and, and so sort of having that uh, hands-on, you know, to, to actually you know, you can be in a lecture quite a bit and, and learn that didactic type of learning, but that problem solving sometimes comes in a lab where you can say, okay, what does this mean? Or I love just to do spontaneous type experiments too. And, and so, uh, for example, well, just we're going to do it again this year, but last year, looking, there's a bacteria that's called a methicillin resistant Staph aureus. It kills 94,000 people a year. It's a yes. lot worse in car 
good 500,000 plus hospitalized. Wow. And wow. so we just decided to take dollar bills and, and, and look at dollar bills. And we find these methicillin resistant staph aureus on dollar bills. Wow. And so we're going to play with that some more because I don't know about you, but I just, uh, I take dollar bills, I get my change, and then right away I start eating my sandwich. Oh, yes. And it isn't that I wash my hands in between all the time, but uh, in between, but uh, so just that, that whole concept. So, so for students to actually have fun and do experiments and then to do it under safe, you know, under safe conditions, but just to see what's out there, it's really nice. And, and a lot of these, just about all the students, they'll be going out and working with patients. And so that knowledge is, uh, is power for them and, and for the people they're going to be taking care of. And so. Yeah, and, and Kaylin, it, it, you know, with the hospice volunteering, volunteering and getting yeah. a group together to go to Peru, I mean, it's clear you're interested in working with people. Definitely. And is that, is that something you think is important going into the health profession side? Yes. Um, I think it's more crucial than ever. Um, okay. Especially because a lot of you typically want to be a doctor in order to help people. Mm -hmm. But I think um, where that is most important is in you know, primary care and being able to actually you know, help people that way directly. But there are a lot less people going into primary care. But I think if you don't care about people, then you sh really shouldn't be a doctor. It's all about you know, treating them, curing them if you can. And not only that, but it's, it's about the person. And if you show a, a patient that you really care about them, then they're going to be more motivated to care about themselves. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. And you, I assume that you know a number of your student colleagues who are taking a similar route to you, looking for med school or yes. uh, some other postgraduate opportunity. Uh, I would say a majority of everyone that I, you know, um, acquaint with, are all pursuing. Um, my friend. Kayla Rule actually just got accepted into pharmacy school, and so uh, I'm I applied to medical school, um, and uh, a few others did as well. And then there are juniors right now that are planning on applying next year for med school. Cool. And so, Bert, I, the feedback I've gotten from many of our students in postgraduate education is that they have felt like that you and the rest of the faculty have really prepared them well uh, to go into a professional uh, a professional re realm, into professional school, graduate mm -hmm. school, whichever, in addition to whatever work environment, if somebody were going to go directly into a work environment. Mm -hmm. and I just it's I just want to pass that on and, and get your reaction yeah, well, to that. I, I, it's very, it's wonderful to hear that and so often students will come back and and say, oh, I love this class or, well, I, I mean, there's quite a few, our, our classes are pretty intense. I, I mean, yeah, and yeah, the program yeah. is hard, but, but it's also really fun or really neat for, for a teacher, for a professor, when you hear about students that might be in medical school and they get chosen to be the TA to help teach, you know, anatomy and physiology. That just says that, well, these are, let's face it, when you get accepted to these schools, you're, you're, you're high, you're, you're cream. And, and then to be selected by those, those professors in the professional school to like help, they choose you to help teach the class, that just gives you a heads up that, you know, that's probably, you know, they're really well prepared. And, and, and they do great. And so our, our, our student body in general does very well compared you know, yep, to nationals. Yeah, and, and ooh, how do I put these numbers? Very typically, we have about 60 to 65 percent of the students who are applying to professional school. They get accepted, and, and that's much higher. Some other schools are 20, 25 percent. Uh, there are some schools that are higher. I, I mean, there are some schools that um, well, there's all different ways of, of looking at the numbers. But, but in a national average, I'd say that's higher than national average very what so. I'm hearing. Yeah, and, and we're very excited about it. And, and also, we're, we're a public school. We're, I mean, the neat thing I think we are, we are, we're a private school, but you know, but we have the price of a, of a public school, and, and we have that connection with the students. We have small classes. It's it's a really a, a big win for the students that come here. Cool. Let's take a pause now, and we'll end this segment and be back and okay. talk about a few more things in detail. Okay. That sounds good. My guests are. Bert, Bert, Bert Clark, <laughs> professor of natural sciences, and Kaylin English, um, senior in uh, biology health sciences, I guess. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes.
And we're back uh, on Mondays with Maples with uh, Professor Bert Clark from Natural Sciences and uh, senior majoring in Biology Health Sciences, Kaylin English, and talking about their experiences, what's gone on here, what's happening in the health sciences area, and uh, a little bit about Oregon Tech. And so, Kaylin, you came here from uh, Southern California, uh, mm -hmm. just north of the LA area. Yep. And, um, and you've found the university surprising to your, to based on what you knew ahead of time, or? I really did not know much <laughs> about OIT or even Klamath. Um, my mom said that she'd only move if I came with her, so I said okay. And the first time I came up to Klamath was to go to a uh, road event. Okay. And so I had already said that I was going to OIT, and then I drive up to Klamath, and um, it wasn't exactly what I expected, especially coming from LA, but um, coming here and then going up to the campus and seeing that there was that beautiful, you know, view of the lake and stuff, which made it a lot nicer. And then being able to see the new Dow building too was uh, pretty nice too. It, it's a beautiful state-of-the-art building. Yeah. Terrific equipment in it too. Road event. What's a, tell us about the road event. So a uh, road event is basically just where, you know, new students come and ev new as in freshmen or even transfer come and kind of tour the school. They get to take placement tests and it's just basically a place where they can get familiarized with the campus and um, meet with their advisors and sign up for classes. Okay, and from this interview, you are gonna go directly over to C-flat. Yes. Talk, talk to about C-flat, the Center for Learning and Teaching. Okay. I'm a tutor and an office aide there, and um, basically there are tutors for every subject, uh, math, engineering, writing, biology, you name it, any class there is. And there's also drop-in where any student can come at any hour of the day, and there's also private where you um, get to sign up and just be one-on-one -on -one with a tutor. And then um, C-flat is where students will go to take tests, whether they're makeup or just that's where they prefer to take tests. And they basically deal with anything that has to do with um, academics up there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's a fun place to work and, you know, they, everyone up there is really nice too. And that's a real key component and you were referring to that mm -hmm. in our first segment that we really are sort of a private school experience with it, while being a public school and having a public school price. Um, oh absolutely. I mean some of our classes, um, I, I think some of our cl biggest classes might have 60 students in the lecture. Uh, some universities I've been at, you might have 500 people in a lecture right. room. And, and so here I get to know everybody's name and uh, and it's hard it's hard for the students to skip class because I know oh so and so <laughs> where were you you know I'm joking around but, <laughs> but you get to know everybody uh, when they're in class and and they too uh, the classes are taught by professors and the lectures are by um, the, the labs are by professors and and so you really interact um, with all the, the, the faculty I, I know in our department natural sciences department especially for the biology health sciences program it's quite nice because within natural sciences, there aren't a lot of natural sciences departments mm -hmm. across the country. Most of them are, de what, but we have biology faculty, we have physics, we have chemistry, and we all interact with each other. Mm -hmm. and, and that makes the program uh, quite nice because in, in biology health sciences, I mean, you have to know lots of chemistry. You have to take a full year of physics. You have to take uh, lots of biology classes. And, and so as per faculty, we all interact with each other. And so cool. in chemistry, organic chemistry, it isn't that you're learning a lot of synthesis of various chemical compounds, but often it's like, well, what do you do in organic chemistry? Often it's like how to synthesize various types of pharmaceutical compounds. And so it's very sure. much applied to the health area that you're going to. And, and the same type of in, in physics. Um, you know, you have various physics problems, but sometimes in terms of, of resistance or in terms of levers, I mean, you can study the, the arm just as well as you can study maybe a lever that might be used uh, in, in a machine of some type. And, and so there's those health related. Um, I think OIT is very cool that way in the sense that it's, well, there's a major engineering side to the university, but there's also a large number of majors in the health um, mm -hmm. related areas. And, and so uh, it's sort of like that critical mass when students come here, 
that uh, maybe it won't be their major, but they're talking to other people that might be in medical imaging or in nursing or respiratory care or clinical lab scientists, or uh, the list goes on. You know, there's just a, a large number of health students here. Well, and, and it so sounds like with all those shared different backgrounds and the interactions that you're doing, that that you've really found a way to break down these silos and these barriers oh. between disciplines yeah. and really moving towards a more of an, a, a whole and interdisciplinary kind of approach yeah. to and teaching. And, and that learning. is that is very, uh, very cool because you know uh, at many universities, I mean some departments, they, I mean sometimes people, students don't realize this, but sometimes they don't interact as much as, as you'd like them to, where we are already together and so we interact uh, it's it's like the ideal situation for a biology health sciences program, cool. and 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 yeah, there there is that interdisciplinary, you know, study that that people in chemistry, the faculty are always talking to the people that are teaching pathophysiology or medical micro or immunology or neurobiology, and so you start to, and that's what you want to do. You don't want to just learn chemistry. You want to find out how does this how does this chemistry and physics apply to maybe. Uh, some of the latest things in, in terms of, oh, maybe a disease, uh, a blood disease and, and the flow resistance of blood through a vessel or signal processing of neurons or, you know, to say, okay, and uh, I don't know, it makes it cool. You know, you take yeah. a physics class and then the next class you have, you say, ah, now I know why this is a big deal. Cool. And, and that's hard to do sometimes when you're going through school. Kaylin, as a student, have you found the faculty accessible, e you know, welcoming, uh, willing to help? Um, Definitely. I actually attended um, a year of college down um, in LA. It was Cal State Northridge and there were about 30,000 students there. So I, there were still small classes but because there were so many of them that right. it was really hard to be able to actually go in and, and speak to the professor one on one. And usually they were, you know, in and out. They didn't really hold any office hours there. It seemed like a lot of them were just kind of they had other jobs and so it was it was not a very good uh, way of life a, a good college experience and then I came here and it's awesome I mean it's almost I don't want to say it's like high school but it is as as in you get to um, have all the same students typically in the same classes and so you guys are always kind of going with each other and mm -hmm. becoming better friends and um, helping each other out you have your study buddy there almost every class and then I mean you can ask any question you want in class and as many as you want because there aren't that many of us so you can yeah ask any question and you you make friends with your professors they aren't just your professors you you're friends with them you can joke with them and it's yeah it's very very nice cool and we've actually tried to, to design some of the buildings this way so that there is a study area and it's right across from the faculty offices and so you come in and all of us, we keep our door open. And, and very often it's just like a student will drop, you know, you're just there. It might be a two minute question and then you go back to studying. But it's that kind of interaction that takes place every day. And, and, and so I confess as I schedule time to walk around the campus when I get to be here at the Klamath Falls campus, I can usually tell when exams are coming up because those study areas are pretty packed. Oh yeah. Um. yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and truly, I mean, that's really neat though that, you know, students will come together in study groups and often it's like a group of four or five students all working together and, and then sometimes they'll have problems and they'll just, you know, it's like three feet away from a faculty door and so they'll go in and, and they, they just, you know, work out that problem and, and go on to continue studying. Yeah, it's pretty nice too because we'll just be sitting there and then, you know, Dr. Clark will walk by and even if it's not a class we're in with him, we'll still be able to ask him a question. And I never know the answer though. So <laughs> <laughs> we're hoping one of these times you do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, it's, it's awesome because they're always walking around and they're always willing to stop and answer a question regardless of whether they actually teach it or not. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's kind of like having a walking tutor. They're just kind of walking around and then when you have a question, you just you know, call them over and they'll do their best or cool. we'll just talk. I, um, I actually named my puppy after Dr. Clark <laughs> Burton. <laughs> so, I mean, you can, that's the kind of re relationships you make with your professors. You name your pets after them. So that's very cool. Yeah. What kind of puppy? <laughs> he's a Morky. So he's a Yorkshire Terrier mixed with a, um, Maltese. Is he house trained? We're getting there. Okay. Getting there. <laughs> 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 it's been taking a really long time. 
<laughs> oh, that's very cool. Yeah. That is very cool. I, I've often told people, I've, I've talked to parents, I've talked to students who are thinking about Oregon Tech, and I've often told them a couple of things. Uh, one, that that really we have small classes and the students and faculty get to know each other. And I like to think that if a student misses a class two or three times, that somebody's going to be on the phone to figure out what's going on. Is everything mm -hmm. okay? Are you there? Parents like this a lot more than students do. Um, and so uh, that's just, you know, for, for what it's worth. Parents do like that more than students. The other thing I tell them is that, um, is that this is the kind of place that um, if you want to head down the lines of the, the types of courses that we have, the types of majors we have, that we have a lot of people there to help you get along that way. And, and I think you've seen an example of that today. You've seen an example of this kind of an interaction, this kind of a small campus feel, but yet the rigors of a, of a, of a fully comprehensive program that uh, prepares you to go on and do really well. And uh, I look forward to great things to hearing about Kaylin doing well in med school and uh, look forward to many, many more years of really interesting classes from uh, Professor Clark. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank and you. And thank you both for being here today. I really do yeah. appreciate it. It's oh, a delight. You. It was a great it's a experience. Thank you.